Good afternoon, students. Welcome you to the last session of Functions of Complex Variables. So today is the last class. And before we proceed with today's lecture, let's see what were the solutions to yesterday's exercises. So the first question, we did very important topic yesterday, how to calculate the radius of convergence and how to get the Taylor series expansion, right? Okay, so let's look at the solution of this question that I gave you. I hope you have worked it out. Now, if you compare this power series with the general power series, so you will obtain the value of a n as 1 upon n factorial, right? Now, yesterday I told you that we had two formulas to calculate the radius of convergence. So, when do we apply the first formula? Whenever the factorial terms are there, the cancellation is possible. So, we apply the first formula, right? So, we can quickly calculate the next term that is a n plus 1. It is 1 upon n plus 1 factorial. So now, what is the value of r? r will be limit n tends to infinity. It will be 1 by n factorial divided by 1 by n plus 1 factorial. So we can write it as n plus 1 factorial divided by n factorial, right? Now, you can simply see that whenever we expand n plus 1 factorial, it will become n plus 1 into n factorial. So n factorial will get cancelled and it will give rise to limit n tends to infinity n plus 1. And now when you take the limit as n tends to infinity, what will you obtain? You will obtain infinity as the answer. So yesterday, if you remember the slides, we did two notations when r is equal to infinity and when r is equal to 0. So what was the meaning for r equal to infinity? That means the series converges for all values of z, right? So here, how to interpret the answer? The series will converge in the open disk. Now, what is the center of this power series? If you compare z to the power n with z minus z naught to the power n, z naught is equal to 0, right? So if z naught is equal to 0, so the center is 0. And what is the radius you have computed? It is equal to infinity. So we get a circle whose radius is infinity and center is zero, right? So I think you could have got the correct answer. Now the second question, it was a bit difficult, I would say. So you might have got stuck up in the limit. So let's work out how to calculate the limit term, right? Now you have to calculate the radius of convergence of the power series summation n going from zero to infinity. 1 plus 1 by n raised to power n square z to the power n. So if you compare it with the power series expansion, you will get a n is 1 plus 1 by n whole raised to power n square. So yesterday I told you that whenever in the nth term you will get powers of n, then you can apply the second formula for radius of convergence, right? So, according to the second formula, r is equal to 1 by limit n tends to infinity, nth root of a n. So, I've just put down the value of a n here. Now, when you take the nth root, what will you get? You will get 1 plus 1 by n whole raised to power n squared into 1 by n, right? So, 1 n will get cancelled, right? So, you are left with limit 1 upon limit n tends to infinity, 1 plus 1 by n whole raised to power n. Now, what is the limit value of this expression? This is a very, very important expression. So, how to obtain the limit of this term? Let's see. Now, we have that limit n tends to infinity, 1 plus x by n whole raised to power n. It is always equal to e raised to power x. So, if you compare it with this, what do you find? What is the value of x? x is equal to 1. Right. So accordingly, if x is equal to 1, the limit of this expression will then become e to the power 1. That means this term will become e then. Right. But then the question mark is, how did the limit of this term become equal to e to the power x? So let's see. Let's take the left hand side. That is 1 plus x by n whole raised to power n. Now, using the binomial expansion, we can expand this term as 1 plus n into 
This term is x by n, so we are writing it here. Then n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial x by n whole square plus so on, right? Now, on simple calculations, you can see that n gets cancelled from here. This n gets cancelled with one of the n's here. One n is still left in the denominator, so you can divide it with n minus 1 expression. So what do you get? You will get limit 1 plus x plus 1 minus 1 by n, x squared by 2 factorial and so on. Now, when you take the limit as n tends to infinity, what will happen? 1 by n will become 0. So this term will be left as 1. So you will simply get x squared by 2 factorial. So what is obtained at the end? You are getting 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial and so on. And what is the expansion of this? It is the expansion of e to the power x. So always remember that limit n tends to infinity 1 plus x by n raised to power n is always equal to e raised to power x, right? So now when you compare it with here, so this term becomes e. So your radius of convergence becomes equal to 1 by e. So how to interpret your answer? The series converges in the open disk mod z less than e. Now why is it mod z again? You can see that the power series is z to the power n. So if you compare it with z minus z0, z0 is equal to 0, right? So if z0 is equal to 0, then your center is 0. So we get mod z less than 1 by e. So it is a disk whose radius is 1 by e and center is 0, right? Okay. Then is the third question. The third question said, that if the Taylor series of f of z about z equal to 5 is summation n going from 0 to infinity a n, z minus 5 raised to power n, then what about the coefficient a2, right? Okay, let's recall what definition we did for Taylor series expansion. Taylor series was done by this f of z0 plus f dash z0 by 1 factorial z minus z0 plus f double dash z naught by 2 factorial z minus z naught square and so on, right? Now in this power series or in this data series expansion, I have to calculate the coefficient a2. So if you remember the power series expansion, how did we interpret it? This was a naught, this was a1 and this was a2. So accordingly, what will be my a2? a2 will be f double dash z naught upon 2 factorial. Now, at what point have I been asked to calculate the Taylor series? At the point 5. That and hence, what is my correct option? My correct option is the B option. Yesterday, when I gave this question, I think by mistake, it was written 4 here. 2 factorial, right? So this was about the third question. This is a very simple question according to the definition. Although we did not apply this method when we computed the table. If the function f of z is not analytic at z equal to z naught, then which of the options is correct? If you remember the theorem, Taylor's theorem, there, we said that if the function is analytic, only then we can expand it through a Taylor series, right? That means if the function is not analytic, it cannot be expanded in the Taylor series about the point z equal to z naught, right? So I hope it was correct, right? And I hope you have tried the questions. Okay. Now, let's move on to today's lecture. So today I will be focusing on Lorentz series expansion. So yesterday we have seen what is a power series. And when the Taylor series expansion is expanded about z equal to 0, then it is called a McLaurin series, right? So today we will focus only on the Lorentz series. This is the last topic in complex analysis, right? Now let's see what is a Lorentz series. So the Lorentz theorem, listen to it very carefully. 
Let F set be analytic in a domain containing two concentric circles, C1 and C2, which center Z0. Now, while we I'm going to tell you about Lorentz series, do not forget about Taylor series and start correlating both the things, right? Just remember what definition and what diagram we did in Taylor series. In Taylor series, we said that if the function is analytic inside a closed curve C, so there was only one circle there, right? And the function was analytic inside it, right? In Lorentz series, we are saying that the function should be analytic in between the two concentric circles. What are concentric circles? They are circles having the same center and different radii, right? So you can see there is one circle C1 and the second circle is C2. And the annulus between them, what is annulus? The common portion, right? So this is the common portion. So you can see that center is Z0. This is the center of the concentric circle. And between the region C1 and C2, we are considering this feature. So we have to consider that the function should be analytic within this region, right? Then what is the Lorentz series all about? The Lorentz series expansion f of z is summation a k, k going from 0 to infinity, z Expand these two summations, you will get a naught plus a1 z minus z naught plus so on plus v1 z minus z naught plus v z minus z naught square plus so on. Right? That means do not worry, you will feel that oh, it's so tough, but just I'm going by the definition. But I will promise you that when we will do the questions, I'll tell you the shortcuts to do them, right? So just remember that what is a Lorentz series expansion? In a Lorentz series, you will find positive powers of Z minus Z naught. And you will also find the negative powers of Z minus Z naught. So if I correlate this definition with Taylor series, there, these terms were not present, right? Only these terms were present there, right? B1, B2, B3, all these coefficients equal to zero, then I will obtain a Taylor series expansion, right? So now in this Lorentz series expansion, the terms which are containing the positive powers of Z minus Z naught, it is called the analytic part. And the terms that are containing the negative powers of Z minus Z naught, they are called the principal part, right? So there are two parts in it, positive powers, they relate to the analytic part and the negative powers, they relate to the principal part, right? Now, next we should know that from where do we get these coefficients, right? So we get the coefficients of the Lorentz series using the contour integrals. So for the analytic part, that means for the positive powers, we will get a n as one by two pi r t integral over c, fz upon z minus z naught raised to power n plus 1 dz. And for the principal part, bn, we will get it as 1 by 2 pi r t integral over c, fz upon z minus z naught raised to Use these contour integrals in our questions. I'll tell you the shortcut there, right? Because we have to do it in MCQs, right? Just for the sake of learning what is the Lorentz series, you should know that these contour integrals are used to calculate these coefficients, right? So let's summarize the Lorentz series expansion. So this diagram should be very clear to you that whenever we are going to discuss about Lorentz series, you are always considering that the function is analytic inside this region between the circle R1 and the circle R2, right? And you will have two parts in it the analytic part and the principal part. If the principal part somehow becomes equal to zero, then the Lorentz series expansion is said to be a Taylor series expansion, right? Otherwise, it will continue. Powers of Z minus Z, right? Okay. So this is the analyst region between R1 and R2. Now from this diagram, what are the immediate observations? The immediate observations is that 
the first observation is that we had two circles r1 and r2 so if i keep r2 intact i do not change r2 but if i puncture the disk r1 what will happen it will shrink to the point z0 so this is the region i will get there right so in for this region r1 will become equal to 0 and r2 remains at its own place right now what is the second observation the second observation is that you have punctured the inner disk that means r1 equal to 0 and you have blown out the outer disk the disk r2 so you are writing putting r2 equal to infinity so this is the type of region that you will obtain r1 will become equal to 0 and r2 will become equal to infinity and now what is the third observation in the third observation we are keeping r1 intact and we are blowing out the second circular disk that is we are putting r2 equal to infinity so this is the type of region that we will obtain when we put r2 equal to infinity so first in the first diagram we are puncturing the inner disk in the second diagram we are which questions we will get a Lorentz series and in which questions we will get a Taylor series expansion. So the diagram that you will be given in the question that it will make it clear that which type of series you will get in the answer. Right. So let's see. Okay. The first region is the annulus region. So whenever we are going to talk about the annulus region, 100% the series that you will get at the end will always be a Lorentz series expansion, right? Secondly, whenever this is my diagram, that means we are only talking about a single disk having center at Z0, the inside portion of this disk, then 100% the series will be a Taylor series expansion. And third type, if this is the situation that you are talking about the outside of the circle, then again 100% your answer will be a Lorentz series expansion. And how you are going to distinguish that whether you are getting a Lorentz series or a Taylor series? If the series contains the terms of Z minus Z naught in positive powers, then it will be a Taylor series expansion. And if you are getting mixed terms, both positive as well as negative or simply negative, then it will be a Lorentz series expansion. So I will require all of you to please note these three diagrams so that when we are doing the questions, you can correlate every answer with these diagrams and you can check your answers whether for that particular diagram are we getting a Lorentz series or a Taylor series expansion. So quickly note all these three diagrams and correspondingly write which type of series are we getting for each of these diagrams, right? Quickly write, jot it up. draw the diagrams.
I hope you have noted it down. Okay. Okay. So now let's move on to the next slide. Now, we will discuss two types of questions in Lorem series. One is a simple question when a function is given to you and you have to just determine the Lorem series expansion. And the second type of question that is more important is that when a particular region is provided to you and according to that region, we have to develop the Lorem series expansion. So the second type of problem generally they come in the exams, right? So let's first talk about the simple example. Now you have to expand the Lorentz series expansion for the function f of z equal to sine z upon z square. So this is very, very simple because we are not, I told, I promised you in the beginning that whatever the definition was given to in the Lorentz series, we're not going to do by that definition. I'll tell you the tricks how to calculate the Lorentz series expansion. Now here, you can see that you have a term of sine z. And I think most of you know what is the expansion of sine z. You have done this at plus two level. Sine x is nothing but x minus x cubed by three factorial plus x five by five factorial and so on. So if I have sine z here, I will replace x with z. So the term that is given to me in the function, I will expand it accordingly. And I will get this denominator one by z squared is left out. And I write the expansion for sine z, right? Now, when we multiply the terms, what do we get? We get 1 by z minus z by 3 factorial plus z cubed by 5 factorial and so on, right? Now, if you want to check that, are you getting a Taylor series or a Lorentz series? How will you check? I told you that check that it should contain both positive as well as negative terms, right? A Taylor series only contains positive powers of z. So apart from it, if there are any other terms present, it will be always a Lorentz series expansion. So very clearly you can see that it is containing positive powers of Z also, and it is containing a negative power of Z also. So this is 100% a Lorentz series expansion, right? So this question, there was no region given to you. So simply with the help of sine Z expansion, we could write the Lorentz series expansion, right? This was quite simple. Now let's move on to the second example. The second example says, find the Lorentz series of z to the power minus five sine z with center zero. Here, again, no region is provided to you. Only it is given that we have to find the Lorentz series expansion of this. Now what is the meaning center zero? Center zero means that z minus z naught, that z naught is equal to zero. So your answer will come in the powers of z. If some center is provided to you, as we did yesterday in Taylor series, if you remember, we used to add and subtract that term, right? To make z in the center in that form. So we have to add and subtract. Otherwise, if center is zero, then you are in safest zone. You don't have to add and subtract any term, right? So now, again, you can see that sine z is present here. So we can simply jot down the expansion for sine z here. And when you multiply the terms, we get z to the power minus 4 minus z to the power minus 2 by 3 factorial plus z naught by 5 factorial minus z squared by 7 factorial and so on. You can leave your answer here or you can just calculate these factorial terms and it becomes this. And again, you can check that it is containing positive powers of z as well as negative powers of z. So this is again a Lorentz series expansion. Right. So this was also simple enough. Now let's move on to the third example. In the third example, the question says, find the Lorentz series of z squared e to the power 1 by z. So now what is the expansion for e to the power 1 by z? Everybody knows that e to the power x is what? 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial plus x cubed by 3 factorial and so on. So we are going to use this expansion to replace e to the power 1 by z and then we will obtain the Lorentz series expansion. So let's see. So we have fz as z square into e to the power 1 by z. So in the next step, I've simply written the expansion of e to the power x. x will act as 1 by z now. 
So we have 1 plus x plus x squared. So in place of x, I'm replacing it with 1 by z. So x squared by 2 factorial plus x cubed by 3 factorial plus so on. Right? Now when you multiply them, what will you get? You'll get z squared plus z plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 6 z plus 1 by 24 z squared and so on. And again, you can check that you are getting both negative powers of z as well as positive powers of z. Right? So again, you can confirm that the answer that we have obtained here, this is a Lorentz series expansion. Right? Okay. Now, so these three examples were quite simple. We are not using any concept of definition or concept of Lorentz series here. We are simply using the expansions and we are putting them, right? Now, the next question, which is very, very important from the examination point of view, and these type of questions generally are being asked in the questions, right? So here you can see that the function is provided to you and some regions are also provided to you. So according to these regions, you have to find out the Lorentz series expansion, right? So just read the question. I'm giving you one minute. Just read the question. So the function is there, center is zero, and we have to expand the series for the particular regions given to us. Okay. Now, what is the first step in these questions? The first step in these question is that whatever function is provided to us, we will try to factorize the denominator term and we will split the denominator using the partial fraction method, right? So whenever there is a mixed term here, a product term here, so always try to split them, right? So this is the basic step that we will follow in all the questions. So we have already done the concept of partial fractions many times. So you will put this equal to, you will factorize this term, you will get two factors, z minus one and z minus two. So you can write it as a upon z minus one plus b upon z minus two. And when you solve it, you will get the coefficients of a and b as minus one and minus one, right? So this is the basic step. So this is the first step in the journey of calculating the Lorentz series, right? Then is the second step. Whenever you talk about analyticity, always see that at which point the function is not analytic or just calculate the singularity of that function. So that for that also I told you very simple method, just check the denominator and see where the function is not defined. So if you check the denominator, the function is not defined as z equal to one and z equal to two, right? So the singularities of the given functions are z equal to one and z equal to two, right? So this is the basic step or you can say this is the first step while you are working out for a Lorentz series expansion, right? Now, we move on to the next step or to the first part of the question. In the first part of the question, the region given to us is mod z less than 1, right? Okay, if I go back to the question and if I show you all the three parts, one region is mod z less than 1, the second region is 1 less than mod z less than 2, and the third region is mod z greater than 2. That means we are talking about two circles, basically. One circle is having center 0 and radius 1, and the second circle is having center 0 and radius 2. That means we are talking about two concentric circles with center 0 and radius 1 and 2. And accordingly, we will mark up the regions in each of the sections, right? So now let's move on to the first part of the question. So the first part says the region is mod z less than 1. So I have drawn two concentric circles with center 0 and radius 1 and 2. For the first part, this is my region, mod z less than 1, right? Okay. Now how to proceed? I promised you that we will not go by the contour integral method. So here we will use the shortcut as the binomial result that we did yesterday, right? So we did this result yesterday. You very well remember this, right? And this is the function fz after converting it into the partial fractions, right? Now, just a recap. Yesterday, how did we calculate the Taylor series expansion? If you remember, 
let's revise it quickly what did we do first of all we used we uh, whatever coefficient was given to you here we used to take out that coefficient out and then automatically whatever term you have here it will get divided by that coefficient right and then you use this expansion you write it in the form of a summation and after dividing by that coefficient whatever term you obtain here we used to put it in the place of w and from there we used to get the region of convergence of that particular series right this was the method obtained for taylor series expansion that means we will first try to make it one one minus w we will write the expansion and to obtain the convergence regions we will put the value of w here and then by solving this inequality we used to get the convergence regions right now to obtain the lorentz series expansion we will just do the reverse of this that means we will first develop this part we will develop mod w less than 1 then we will put it up in this expression and then we will find out the expansion for w right okay now you can see that there are two terms present here one is 1 upon z minus 1 and the second term is 1 upon z minus 2 so what are we going to do we will first take up this term right we will do it term by term we will i will first first explain you about this term and then i will explain you how to write this term now for the first term you are given z and 1 here right and what is the region given to you mod z less than 1 i told you that we will start we will do it in the opposite way we will start from mod w less than 1 so if i compare mod w less than 1 with mod z less than 1 what is the value of z sorry what is the value of w it is z that means i have to make the expansion as 1 upon 1 minus z right to apply this formula what do i have here i have 1 upon z minus 1 what do i have to make it i have to make it 1 upon 1 minus z so what shall i do i have to take out a negative sign common from here so i can take out negative sign common and i can write the term as 1 upon 1 minus z right now is it in this form now if it is in this form can i write the expansion now so for the first term how will i write the expansion the expansion is 1 plus z you can just go through this it is 1 plus z plus z square plus so on. right i hope the first part is clear now let's take up the second term now for the second term you have z and you have 2 right that means now you need to compare it with the term 2 because now it is no longer 1 1 was here so we had compared it with 1 now it is to be compared with 2 now logically tell me from this diagram if i take a value of z which is less than 1 automatically it will be less than 2 also isn't it if something is less than 1 it will be less than 2 also so i am writing that if mod z is less than 1 it always implies that mod z is also less than 2 right now i have to develop this inequality mod w less than 1 if i have mod z less than 2 how will i make it less than 1 what should i do with this inequality i have to divide both sides by 2 so if i divide both sides by 2 i will get mod z by 2 is less than 1 right now if i compare this with mod w less than 1 what is the value of w i am getting w is z by 2 that means in this expansion i have to make the term 1 minus sorry 1 upon 1 minus z by 2 so now how will i make this z by 2 what should i take out common to make z by 2 i have to take out two common so when i take out two common from this expansion what will i get i will get two outside i will get z by 2 minus 1 but the term should be 1 minus z by 2 that means i have to take out a negative sign also common so when i take out a negative sign common i will get a plus sign here and i will get 1 by 2 1 minus z by 2 right and when you expand it using this formula you will get 1 by 2 here and 1 minus 1 by z by 2 will become 1 plus z by 2 plus z by 2 whole square 
and so on, right? Now just open up the brackets and collect all the like terms. So you will get one plus z plus z square, half plus z by four plus z square by a plus so and so. Now when you add the common terms, one and half will get added, it will become three by two. Z plus z by four will get added, it will become five by four z. Z square will get added with z square by eight and it will become nine by eight z square, right? Now, if you check your answer, you can find that there are only positive powers of z present in this expansion. That means, if you remember that slide which I told you to jot down, isn't, are you, are you getting a Taylor series expansion or are you getting a Lorentz series expansion? Now, this is a Taylor series expansion because only positive powers of z are present here, right? And then, if you correlate the diagram, the middle diagram in that slide, in the center diagram, you had taken the figure as all uh, one circle and the inside portion of that circle was marked. So if you look into this diagram also, the same region is there, right? There is only one disk and the center and the interior of that disk is being considered. So you can correlate that slide with this question and you can see that for that particular region, you will always get a Taylor series expansion. So I told you that a Taylor series expansion can be obtained from a Lorentz series expansion when you put the analytic, the principal part of the Lorentz series equal to zero, right? So any doubts in this first part? If there are no doubts, only then I'll proceed to the second part. Please ask your doubt if there is any in the first part. Yes, we can 100% say that Taylor series is derived from Lorentz series expansion. Yes. Okay, so I cannot find any doubts in the question pane. So we move to the second part of this question. In the second part, the region given to you is 1 less than mod z less than 2. So the same story we are going to repeat in every part, right? According to the region given to us, we will obtain a unique Lorentz series expansion, right? So now let's see what happens here. So this is your diagram. Now, which part are we considering here? We are considering this annulus bridge, right? Between one and two. Now, this was the function after obtain converting it into partial fractions. Now let us see according to the regions, how will I manipulate these terms? And again, we are going to use the same binomial expansion, right? So for the first term, that is minus one upon z minus one. Now there are two regions given here. One is one less than mod z and the second one is mod z less than two. According to the coefficient, we have to take that particular region, right? So for the first part, for the first function, let us take the region. One less than mod z, what does it mean? It means mod z is greater than one. Now I have to develop mod w less than one. Now, just think for a second and tell me, how will I make this inequality less than sign? This is given as greater than. How will I make it less than? See, if I multiply with a negative sign, what will happen? 100% inequality will change. But then 1 will become minus 1. But here, what should be there? It should be 1, positive 1. That means I cannot take negative sign, right? So what should be done? How can I make this inequality negative? Yes, one of the student has given me the correct answer that we will reciprocate it. Very good. So when we reciprocate it, we get 1 by mod z is less than 1. That means now the role of w will be played with 1 by z. That means I should get the expansion as 1 upon 1 minus 1 by z. Now, how will I get 1 by z here? What should I take out common? I have to take out z common. If I take out z common, I will get 1 minus 1 by z. Right? So, this is about the first term. We will see how to expand it in the next step. Now, let's see how to manipulate the second term. 
Now for the second term, the coefficient is two. That means I need to compare it with two now. So I can see that in the region, it is already given that mod Z is less than two. Again, I have to make this inequality, mod W less than one. How will I make it less than one? When I divide both sides by two, so when I divide both sides by 2, I will get mod Z by 2 is less than 1, right? Now that means the role of W will be played by Z by 2. That means if I have Z by 2 here, I have to make the expansion as 1 upon 1 minus Z by 2. So how will I make Z by 2 here if I take out 2 common? So when I take out 2 common, I will get Z by 2 minus 1. But I should get, I should be getting 1 minus z by 2. That means I should take out a negative sign also common, right? So I have taken out a negative sign. So this will become plus and I will get 1 by 2, 1 minus z by 2 raised to power minus 1. So now this is the most important step. If you are able to grasp this step, rest you can expand it using the binomial expansion, right? So this is the crucial step in the Lorentz series expansion. If you have written this correctly, then 100% your answer will be correct. If you make a mistake in this step, the whole answer is wrong, right? Now it's just the expansion left. So the first term is written as minus one by Z, one upon one minus Z, one minus one by Z, use this expansion. You will get one plus one by Z plus one by Z squared plus one by Z cube and so on. In the second term, you will write it as one by two, one plus Z by two plus Z squared by four plus so on. Now the next thing is to simplify the brackets, open up all the bracketed terms. So you get minus one by Z, minus one by Z squared, minus one by Z four, so on, plus one by two plus Z by four plus Z squared by eight and so on. And now you can see that there are no like terms present here. So we will simply write down the answer as half plus Z by four plus Z squared by eight and so on. And then minus 1 by z, minus 1 by z squared, minus 1 by z cube, and so on. Right? So now if I compare my answer with that slide, what can you see? What is the answer? The answer is coming both in positive powers of z as well as in negative powers of z. So which series is this? This is a Lorentz series expansion. And if you check the diagram, it is the annulus region. So if you just correlate that slide. The first diagram was the annulus region. And what was the conclusion of that region? You will always get a Lorentz series expansion. So this is what we are getting, right? Okay, just go through this slide and please ask your answer. Ask your doubt if you have any. Quickly go through this slide. Otherwise we will move to the third part. Okay, so I'm not getting any doubts. So we move to the third part now. In the third part, we had mod Z greater than two. So same story again here. So let's look at the region. Mod Z greater than two means we are talking about this particular region now. So the function was minus one upon Z minus one, minus one upon Z minus two. And we will be using the same binomial expansion, right? So now let us see according to the given region how to manipulate these two terms to use this expansion, right? And, and again, we have to develop this and accordingly we will write the expansion. So for the first term, the comparison should be made with one, right? Now your region given to you is mod Z greater than two, right? Now how will I compare it with one? Now I can say that if Z is greater than two. That means if something is greater than two, logically it will be greater than one also, isn't it? If I'm already talking about something is greater than two, it will be all, already greater than one also, right? So if mod Z is greater than two, mod Z will always be greater than one also. So for this part, I have to make the comparison with one, right? Now, if this is the region, I have to make the inequality mod W less than one. Now, how will I make it mod W less than one? What manipulation should I do here? Tell me.
So we will again reciprocate the top because if I multiply with negative, I will get a minus sign here, right? So that will not solve my purpose. So we are going to reciprocate it. Yes, right? So when we reciprocate it, we will get the term as one by Z less than one, right? That means now the role of W will be played with one by Z. So I should get the expansion one upon one minus one by Z. Now, how will I make this one upon one minus Z? What should I take out common? I have to take out Z common. So when I take out Z common, I will get one minus one by Z, right? So this is about the first term. Now let's talk about the second term. Now for the second term, we have two written over here. So that means now the comparison should be with two. So the region is already given to me as mod Z is greater than two. Now again, think how to make it mod W less than one, how to make this inequality from here. How will I convert this inequality in this form, the mod W less than one? So what we do, we first divide both sides by two, right? We will first divide both sides by two. When we divide both sides by two, we will get mod Z by two is greater than one. But now still it is greater than one, right? So yes, one student has given me the correct answer, Urva, very good. And now it is greater than one. If it is greater than one, how will I make it less? By reciprocating it. So when I reciprocate it, I will get two by Z is less than one, right? So let's again revise how to make it less than one. Mod Z is greater than two, that means First of all, I will divide both sides by two. So I will get Z by two is greater than one. And then I will reciprocate this expression. I will get two by Z is less than one. Now let's try to write W here. It will be two by Z. So I have to make the expansion as one upon one minus two by Z. So how will I make it two by Z here? I have to take out Z again common. So when I take out Z common, I get one upon Z, one minus two by Z. So this is the most crucial step. Now is the expansion left. So for the first term, the expansion becomes minus one by Z, one plus one by Z plus one by Z squared plus so on. And the second term, it will become minus one by Z, one plus two by Z plus four by Z squared plus so on. You can just open up the brackets and collect the like terms. So you will find minus one by Z, minus one by Z squared, minus one by Z cube, then minus one by Z, minus two by Z squared, minus four by Z cube, and so on. And you can find out that all the times, all the terms that you obtain are like terms here. So you can add them up. And when you add them up, you'll get the expansion as minus two by Z, minus three by Z squared, minus five by Z cube, and so on, right? So now again, if you check the series, the powers of Z are in negative powers, right? So again, this is a Lorentz series expansion. And again, if you check it with that slide, the third diagram corresponded to this diagram, right? The circle and the outer part of that circle was considered. And what type of series did I make you write there? You will always get a Lorentz series expansion, right? So, in this very question with all the three parts, you can check that slide also that you will get that particular series. And again, I'm repeating that a Taylor series is always obtained from a Lorentz series expansion when there are no negative terms present there, right? So these three questions, the three parts of these questions, they are very, very important because in your exams, probably these type of questions and Lorentz series will be asked, right? So you will be given a particular region and there will be options provided to you and they will ask for the correct option that in this particular region, what will be the Lorentz series expansion for that particular function, right? So in the next slide, I have given you a question to practice. So it's the same question, the terms have been changed. There is a function f of z, one upon z plus one into z plus three. So your first job will be using partial fraction split the denominator terms. And then according to these three regions, you have to develop the Lorentz series expansion, right? Okay. Now, 
Uh, the answers also are provided in the next slide. So once you practice the question, you can cross check the answer here. And with this, your topic is over for complex analysis. Now I have to make some important announcements for your exam point of view. Now the syllabus for the end term examination is the same thing as given in your CHO. I've just copied that CHO here for your reference. So we have four year series. We have ordinary differential equations. Then we have Laplace transforms. Then we have partial differential equations. Applications of partial differential equations to wave, heat, and Laplace equations, and the entire complex variables done by me, right? And then the next thing is what is the pattern of your end term examination, right? The pattern is the, there will be total 45 questions to be attempted, 30 questions will be one mark based, and 15 questions will be two marks based, right? So the total marks of your end term examination would be 60, right? And then duration of your paper would be two hours and the platform is same, my anatomy, as you have done for FA2 and your ST2, right? And the next important thing is that although Laplace transform was covered in the class before the lockdown period, but we will be still conducting classes of Laplace transform from 3rd June to 7th June, just for your revision. And timings, we will be intimating you soon through your emails. So keep checking your mails. And any other doubts apart from all these things that I've told you. The date sheet of the end term examinations will be shared to you. It will be shared on the chalk part, so don't worry about it. It is mostly in, um, most probably in the month of June only, first or second week. Okay. Okay, so thank you all for listening to me for all these eight days. Thank you so much. So if you have any doubts, you can just drop me your mails to my mail address, right? Okay, fine. Thank you so much.